Hi, I'm Dr. Rachel Langley, and I'm here to talk to you today about shaving bumps, specifically for the guys, though a lot of this can be applied to wherever you would like to shave. So as a doctor in the military, as a flight surgeon, I definitely dealt with lots of guys who are having to shave every other day and got really bad shave bumps. So those red spots, especially on your neck beard, uh, tended to come up. Um, they would get red and painful and wouldn't go away because you needed to shave every single day. And so it was pretty rough. Sometimes it would lead to, to some really bad little infections or scarring across the neck. Um, I saw some pretty bad cases in my time. So I wanted to make sure that uh, I shared the information with you. Um, as I always told my patients, military service isn't supposed to scar you for life, at least not in that way. And so if there's things that we can do, like a simple cream that you apply every day that can make a big difference, then that is wonderful. Um, so it's called pseudofolliculitis barbae. Folliculitis is a little infection of the hair follicles, folliculitis. It's called pseudofolliculitis because there's not actually an infection going on typically. Uh, if there is, it, it gets a lot worse. But the little shave bumps that you get so commonly aren't really infections. They're sources of irritation for sure. So it's called pseudofolliculitis and barbae stands for the kind of the barber, the area of your beard. Uh, so there are little areas of irritation from shaving so often. So one of the first things that you can do is, um, I mean, if you're not in the military and you don't have to shave every day, give your skin a break whenever you can. Um, but sometimes that neck beard is really itchy. I mean, I don't know. I've been trying to grow a beard my entire life and haven't had any luck. But from what I've heard, the neck beard isn't that comfortable. So uh, being able to remove it definitely brings some relief. So using electric clippers can sometimes irritate the skin less. It does tend to leave a little bit more of stubble, um, but that's one option. Another thing that you can do is chemical hair removal, things classically like Nair, that uh, is still a little irritating to the skin, but not quite so traumatic as rubbing a sharp blade across your neck. Um, and finally, if you if really need to, to stick with shaving the, the regular way, uh, make sure that you're using a really uh, lubricative, uh, either gel or cream, shaving cream, shaving gel. Um, sometimes there's even like lotion-like products that are out there um, that are super greasy, but that could lead to uh, more soothing of the skin while you're shaving and removing that hair. It can help to apply warm compresses to your face uh, beforehand shaving. That kind of opens up the hair follicles, opens up your pores. Uh, and finally, trying to, op to, to set free those little hairs that can sometimes get kind of bent over and irritate your skin by doing a little bit of exfoliation every day. So whether that's with a shaving brush or a soft cloth or even a little sponge, just in circular motions across your beard area every day um, to try to set those, uh, any little hairs that are starting to get ingrown a little bit to set it, let them free, um, to let some of those skin cells that might clog uh, up the pores and, and hair follicles and cause issues, instead getting those off of your face, those can all be beneficial. Okay, so you're doing all that, you're still getting shave bumps. That's definitely sometimes the case, especially with more curly hair, uh, that tends to get more shave bumps because those curls, those hair, that hair curls into your skin right back and causes irritation. So what can you do about that? So first of all, something that you can just do right away, go uh, to your local pharmacy, wherever it sells medications, get some hydrocortisone cream. Uh, that's a steroid cream, the mildest cream you can find, and put a little dot on every shave bump that you get twice a day, um, and that can at least let them heal faster. Um, so that can, and if you need something stronger, there's a lot of stronger steroids out there that you can get from your doctor, and maybe that's what you need. There's risks to that, though. I mean, not so much with the hydrocortisone that you get over the counter, but the stronger the steroid you get, if you use them twice a day for more than two weeks at a time, sometimes it can cause lightening of the color of your skin or even a little dimple where you tend to dot it a lot. So that's no good. Um, sometimes if it's over a scarred area anyway, that's not so bad because those tend to be darker colored and thicker skinned anyway. Um, but there are ways that you can try to prevent these shave bumps, and that's where visiting your doctor and getting a prescription strength skin cream is key. So T-retinoin um, is a, a cream that's commonly used for acne, also can be used for fine lines and just 
skin health in general, it's a pretty awesome cream, and it can help to prevent these uh, bumps in the first place. So you have to apply it every night. Um, most uh, guys that I know apply it just to their, their neck beard because that's where they get the worst shave bumps. It can sometimes cause irritation to your skin, kind of dryness. Uh, so sometimes you ease into it by using it every other day. Um, I have another video that I'll post at the end on how to get used your skin used to T-retinoin because uh, it's such a useful skin cream for so many things, including, it turns out, shave bumps. Um, if you're regularly using T-retinoin and regularly using the hydrocortisone or stronger steroid creams and things aren't getting better, it might be worth pursuing laser hair removal if this is something you need to be doing long term. I know in the military there were certain big medical treatment facilities that had lasers and they pretty much just use it for uh, men with severe cases of shave bumps uh, or PFB, pseudoslycolitis barbae and it would help to resolve the issue better than anything I'd seen. So pretty cool things. Uh, hope you learned something. Maybe click on that video to learn more about T-retinoin, and be sure to subscribe to my channel so that you can learn about when I post new videos. Thanks for watching.